We're going to be looking at strings and strings are usually a number of characters that are placed next to each other. Um, we can have a string of, of numbers, a string of characters which would be possibly um, sentences or words in the English language. Um, so we're going to see how to use that but before we go and look at that let's have a look at what um, the ASCII table is and how characters are associated with certain numbers. Let's have a look at the ASCII table. The ASCII table um, is in this specific um, one that I've obtained from ASCIItable.com. Um, you'll see that there's different decimal values that are associated to specific characters. Now there's a lot of, um, if we go down over here, you will see that there's a lot of um, of characters specific from 0 up to 31 which are sort of special characters they, um, ones that we're not really going to be looking at but the characters that we will be possibly looking at is all the values uh, have all got values from number 32 all the way up to 127 yet we're going to probably be looking at less of those characters what is important to know is that a space, as you would place with your space bar, is character 32 on the um, ASCII table. Also, you need to look at, um, just be careful that you, you'll see that there's hexadecimal octal numbers as well represented over here. Don't get confused between them and your decimal numbers. Also for the number 0, that is number 48. So if you know what number 0 is, that 0 is number 48, you know that 1 would be 49, 2 would be 50, 3 would be 51. So that's all the way up to 9, which would be ASCII number 57. Okay. Also, keep in mind that the uppercase A is the ASCII number 65. And... I mean, if you know what the uppercase of A is, that that's 65, you know that B would be 66, C would be 67. In the same way, lowercase A, that would be um, ASCII number 97. So in the same way, B would be 98, C, lowercase C would be 99, etc. So... Those few characters that I've just mentioned are the ones that I consider to be important to know because you can, from those, you can actually generate and figure out what the other ones are supposed to be. So, what is this ASCII table that we are looking at? Well, every time you type a, a key on a keyboard, for example, zero, the computer doesn't know what a zero is. It goes and the number 48 goes from the keyboard to the computer. The computer will then go and say, oh, okay, I'm getting a, a, a character zero, and it will start doing some um, manipulation to be able to identify it as a number zero. And you'll see, I mean, that's why I say that 48 is important. You'll see later on in the examples we do, we actually have to subtract 48 from numbers. Um, to be able to identify what the actual value is because every time a character is, is appearing in a, in a when a number gets pushed it the computer only sees these characters between 48 um, all the way up to 57 um, so this is not something that you will then be able to see um, or the computer wouldn't be able to see otherwise so um, yeah, these tables are available online. You're able to um, um, get access to them very easily if you just type in ASCII table um, in a Google search. Um, also, like I said, in this one is ASCIItable.com. Um, note the way to spell ASCII is A-S-C-I-I. -I. Once you do that, you'll be able to um, find a table. I see that this one's source comes from www.lookuptables.com So uh, you'll be able to find different types of ASCII tables um, online if you do a search for them. Um, my advice is print out a copy somewhere 
um, it will be always useful for you to um, use as a reference but um, eventually those specific ones that I've mentioned learn them know them because you will use them quite often so even though for this specific example we're not going to be really using the ASCII tables necessarily um, it is something that you need to be aware of you will see that we start looking at um, using it quite intensively in examples to follow um, so it's important that you're just familiar with what the ASCII table is All right so with things we've got to take into account that there's a new library we, we're going to be using so we've got to have a hash include string dot h so this is a, another library we have to declare it's um, going to be crucial for the commands we're going to be looking at today these string commands we're going to be looking at today um, yes there are many more available out there um, like I've mentioned before I've often found that you use those other um, um, commands that might be in the string library and um, then the programs don't work because there could be uh, maybe errors in, in those libraries there could be that um, the, those libraries are actually fully functional but the amount of memory that we've got allocated on the processor is, is not enough to actually um, process those, um, those um, commands so um, we're going to be looking at the very basics my advice is no, uh, uh, usually for my exams and tests I highly discourage people to um, know any more of those commands because it just adds confusion but um, with what we're going to be um, looking at today you can do a lot again a lot of um, problems I've solved in engineering and science related um, issues with these specific commands okay so um, again we've got our, our standard format we've got over here and um, we're going to be introducing a new uh, type of variable which is a character okay so character can be um, this is in this case any of the characters that's on your keyboard so even if you type in the numbers over there they are not seen by the computer as numbers but they actually are seen as characters and we're just going to have over here we're going to have a, a variable that we're going to be calling um, let's say words or let's call it maybe sent for sentence and I'm going to represent it in the following manner and I'll explain to you now what it means okay so I've got this character, I'm going to make it sentence, just to make it easy, the full word sentence over there. So this variable sentence is going to consist of characters, there's going to be 20 characters inside of it. Okay, and it's going to be saying hello world. Now what's important to know over here is that these 20 characters that we're looking at, one of the characters inside of that is... Uh, the final character of the string which is a null character um, so in this example we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 characters um, so keep in mind even the space in between that's seen as a character that would be your character 32 um, on the ASCII table so even though we've got 20 characters that are represented over here it actually means we can only have 19 characters displayed. The final one is an indication of the end of, the, of, the, of this variable sentence. And um, this can become quite important later on when you realize that there's certain um, things to enter in. And for some reason it's not um, wanting to store the information. That's maybe because you put one character less. This 20 can be any number. Um, it could be 200. It can be... 50 it can be 100 it represents the amount of compartments that they are in so each compartment is um, able to hold a specific character so if we have a sentence like this then for each letter and, and character including the space will be then stored in each of those compartments you can actually think of it as uh, old post boxes 
that are appearing from um, that there'd be 20 post boxes that you've got over there but keep in mind that this post box order is counting from the position zero so if you have to look at um, the word hello over here the uppercase H is in position zero of this variable sentence the E is in position one the R is in position two the next R is in position three the O is in position four so even though hello's got five letters in it it's an N minus one position for this specific variable so all these type of, um, of arrays um, this is essentially you've got a string which is a, a one by n array um, so this specific string or array has got um, a certain number of, of elements in it and um, but it starts off with at, at numbering the position of the first element in, in position zero We'll hopefully see more of that being used later on. Okay, so I'm also assigning over here integer um, of i is equal to zero. Um, the reason for that is there's probably going to be some for loop I'll be looking at, um, and you'll see the, well, there will be a for loop that I'll be looking at. So now we've declared our, our variables over there. The first um, thing I'm going to do is, is I want to join two strings together okay so the first command we're going to be looking at is str cat which is stand for or stands for string cat and um, string cat is essentially allows for strings to be joined so for example we can have string cat word comma y Okay, so what this is going to do is, it's going to say, um, it's, it's going to go and it's going to join the letter Y to the string that we've got that's um, sentence. So this needs to be sentence, not word. Okay, and so it's going to add that Y to, this, to the sentence we've got of hello world. Um, it's going to add it at the end. And it's going to then save that into the actual variable sentence now keep in mind um, people sometimes think that they want to let's say add the y in the front and they'll swap these two terms around so they'll have string cat uh, possibly in y comma sentence that does not work you've got to look at other ways of getting the y in the beginning of the string should you wish to do so there is ways to do it um, it's a problem that would be a good exercise to actually do um, but um, you've got to have it in the format of whatever you add to this specific sentence or string that you might have it will be stored back into that specific variable so if you've got a Y in um, quotation marks over here for the first term it won't be able to store it into that that's not a variable of why isn't available so that's um, quite crucial to have that over there okay now when it comes to um, to printing out these characters within a, a specific um, array or string you need to actually um, type it out um, one letter at a time so for example we're going to have a for loop so i is equal to zero, i is less than or equal to, um, in this case, 19, because we've got 19 characters that's going to be valid in, in this example, and i plus plus. So we want to go through every single character over here um, within this um, sentence uh, string that we've got. And we want to then output what that specific um, um, character is. So printf percentage c and 
and over here we're going to have sentence of I. Okay, so what this is going to do is every so sentence of I looks at which character within sentence is going to point at that specific time. Okay, so it's important to notice that as this for loop goes, it's going to keep on going through it from the beginning of this of this array from the H all the way up to the D. Probably continue with the letter Y that we've just added over there. But um, what's important to also know is that um, it's it's also going up to the to, to the position 19 because we're starting from position zero. So if you look from, from position zero all the way to position 19, that would be 20 characters that you've cycled through. So every single character will be printed as a character. That's what the percentage C um, does over there for the printf statement. Um, and it will be basically monitoring it in terms of position I. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. Syntax error. Hmm. Why is it that we're getting the syntax error over there? It tells us that we're missing a semicolon. Ah, so this is also again a common mistake that gets made. Um, you might also have been a little bit confused over there if you're new to programming. So over there, you need semicolons instead of commas. Okay, so sometimes the information that we are given over here when these errors do appear do help us. Um, they often do help us actually. But there are times that that can be just really um, confusing and we still don't know what the reason is, what, they, what they're what saying and what we have to do. So let's run this now again and see what happens. Okay, so you'll see over here we've got Hello Worldy. This is what we expect to have appear over here. But you'll see no, 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 no. And the reason for all these no's is that we are actually going and it's printing out the characters that are after the Y in the hello world. So what it's done is taken the hello world, it's added the Y to the end of it, as we can see over here. Um, and then because we are keep on printing all the characters up to position um, 19, these characters don't have anything in them. They've got no characters in them. And so they just keep on printing these null characters over there. So these null characters can be useful. We can use them to monitor to know if we're at the end of a, a string of information. Um, but yet we can must be careful if we do add some other characters in between over here. Um, and it's null character maybe in between in a string. It could give us wrong information. Okay, so. Um, just be aware of that. Okay, so maybe I need to just like have a printf statement over here with a new line just for that exit zero. So if we run it now, that's what it appears to be. Okay, and so we can go and we can um, um, change again the sentence to whatever we want it to be. We can also, um, I mean, one of the other things we can do is we can actually go and print this sentence backwards. We can say I is equal to 19. I needs to be larger than or equal to 0 and I'm minus minus. Okay, so now if we run it, it will actually give us a reverse. So all the null characters will be shown, and then it will be hello world, starting off with Y, and ending with the uppercase H. So these can be useful tools to use to be able to know certain positions. We can go through um, each of the, if we reset this to the way it was, 
what we would often use these for loops for is to actually go and maybe check what each character is. So instead of just printing out the character over there, we'll be checking. Maybe we want to keep record of how many E's there are. And every time there's an E, it will save the variable in a, in a variable E and in increment the value of, of a variable E. Um, you might want to use it to be able to determine how many vowels there are. And um, so every time you see an A, E, I, O, U, you would be able to increment a certain variable and be able to count how many um, vowels there might be in a sentence. So these for loops are useful to go through each character and identify what they are and um, print them out or manipulate them as needed. Okay, so we're going to be looking at some um, character or some string operators that are um, possibly useful that we might have to come across. Okay, so and these are done with printf statements. So printf, the length of the string is, and we'll have a percentage d, like that, and string length of sentence. Okay, so let's sign this and just see what it does. The length of the string of the string is twelve. Okay, again I'll just have a printf statement over here just to for that return zero. Printf new line like that. Okay, so the length of the string is twelve. Is it two? Well it's one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's twelve characters that's in the in in the words or sentence. Hello, Woody. Okay, so that is correct. Keep in mind though, the string length op op operation operator or command can be very useful. We do use it quite often. But the last character is in position, it's not in position 12, it's in position 11. And always the string length of the sentence minus 1 because we're starting off from position 0. So that would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's 11 from 0 to 11 um, in terms of the position. Okay, let's have a look at, uh, at another command that might be useful when you're dealing with um, arrays or with strings specifically. Okay, so the letter O is at, and again we're going to have a percentage D, and this is going to be str str so that's the string string of the sentence comma o so we want to determine whether there is a letter o in this hello worldy so obviously it is a, it's a lowercase o that we're looking at um, um, in, in terms of that so let's sign it and see what happens Oh, we need to close the brackets over here. Okay, so we need a comma over there as well. Okay. Right, I need to have some new lines in over here. Just to prevent confusion. Right, so now let's have a look. The letter O is at 101.77652. Now this number represents a value in memory. Um, it actually, we're not interested in what this value of this number actually means. For us the purpose is, is if there isn't a number, if that letter was not in the string, what would this number be? So let's try um, to do the same command over here. So I'm just going to copy this, this um, line over here. 
place it below it. But I'm going to be looking for the letter A. So hello worldy should not have the letter A in it. Let's run it and see what happens. So if the letter is with a string string command, if it's not in that string, so in this sentence that we're looking at on this specific array, if it's not there, you get the answer of zero. But if it is there, you get some random number as shown over there. You'll realize the first number was equal to 177 something. Now it's suddenly equal to 3442. So this number, we not um, we don't care really what it means. We don't care what it refers to. But if there is a number, it means that there is this um, specific characters in a string. Same time we could have uh, OR. Let's run the program again and see what happens. So, hello worldy, the OR for, for worldy is in a sentence. So we get some number over there. But if it isn't over there, um, like for example the A, then we get a value of zero. So this can be quite useful. We can um, check to see if certain letters are in a certain um, string or in a certain array. Um, I'm just like thinking of the game Hangman. If you're not familiar with the game Hangman, I believe a lot of um, people, especially in the new, newer generations, are not familiar with the game Hangman. Um, do yourself a favor, go and have a look on Google, see how it um, is played. It's essentially a, a game where one person at a time guess a word another person is thinking of, and I've got to guess it by, by thinking of certain um, letters and um, or certain characters. And in that sense, they'll be able to um, identify what the final word is. Um, so you can actually create a hangman game. And um, every time a person guesses if that letter um, should be within the um, array, you would be able to get some or other random value generated. If it's not over there, you'll get the value zero. So you can actually identify and tell the user, oh no, this letter that you think think it might be in this um, sentence or in this um, word is not over there, or it is over there, by knowing if it is a zero or not um, as an output of the string string command. Um, okay, so we had to look at a single letters. We had to look at a couple of letters that might be within a um, in in a a, a string or an array okay and um, we've also seen that if there is a string that does not exist so we can have a r for example or a r e if we run that that will also give us a value of zero um, as we show over here because so a r e is not in hello worldy so that would be equal to a value of zero and then the letters OR that is in Hello Worldy, and so we're getting some other value over there. Okay, so that is quite useful for us to know that these are the different things we can use um, string length and string string width. What about in a scenario that we want to use it to enter in a word? Now, up to now, what we've done is, is we have looked at a, a static or constant value that's been allocated to the um, variable sentence, hello world. Okay, let's go, I'm going to sync that over here, I'm going to um, just remove that. Now I just want to see how these different commands might work with, a, for example, with a, a sentence that I've entered in. The problem is, is we cannot use a standard scan if um, statement um, and this is because if there's any spaces that you might have in your sentence like hello world then it's going to not work as you intend it to be so we've got to um, enter in as a following scan if again your percentage as you would always have it um, and you would have it in your double apostrophes over there, you still have your ampersand um, input, for example, over there. 
but what is very important is that we need to look at what's after this um, percentage sign. So it will be a square bracket that opens up over there. You have this carrot sign, which is the little, um, sort of like a little hat sign that you will use. And after that, a four, uh, sorry, a backslash in. And then you will close your square bracket. So it's important to know this. This essentially is saying, allow the person to type in the characters until they've pressed enter. Um, and that will store it into uh, a certain input. Okay, what we can do over here is we can use the self input, we can use sentence because we've already declared a sentence over there. And I've, you'll see I've taken out in terms of the hello world over there so that it's just a clear blank piece of um, variable that we'll be using. Okay, so now if we run it, I guess I need to put my semicolon over there. The problem that I'm having over here is I'm not knowing is this program actually executing or is there some other error. So I actually need to prompt the user with a printf statement. Please enter a sentence. Okay, and we could actually go and code on space over there just for neatness. So we run it. Please enter sentence, hello world. And again, we'll see that hello world will be there. The string length is 11. We told that the letters OR is, um, is associated with some number. So there is the letters OR in it, but the uh, letters ARE is not there. Um, let's run it again. And let's say, are you okay? So now you'll see that the ARE is given some some value, but OR is given a value zero. We still got a string length of eleven. Is that correct? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes. If I had to type that, are you okay with the capital A? Would it still give me that same answer? Are you okay? Now you'll see that with the uppercase A over there for the let for, for the word R, it's not recognized. So uppercase and lowercase is very important um, in terms of strings. They're able to differentiate between them. You know, you, you need to be able to identify them as um, separate things. Okay, so we basically had a look at how to enter in um, some, some um, text using the scanf. Um, command um, so that's with this string over here we've had a look at how to go through a string from 0 or up to a certain number um, number 19 we've looked at the string length command we've looked at the string string command we've looked at the string cat command over here as well something else might be just interesting to look at and again this is where I encourage you to experiment and try different things and um, see what happens. What happens if the sentence is longer than 20 characters? So let's say hello there Hope you are doing well And enter Now you'll see that suddenly there's these errors that are coming up saying that um, The array length of scan f is too small because we've only got 20 characters over there You'll see that hello there, hope you, and then suddenly a null character. So how many characters are there over there? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. And as you can see, the twentieth character is a null character. So even though you are typing in more than um or you, you entered in 20 characters, the last one is automatically assigned a null character. So keep in mind, whenever you want to enter in a certain amount of um, letters into an array, if you know that there is going to always be, let's say, five um, letters that will be entered, make sure your race um, length is at least 
one added to that so there will be at least six it will be a size of six to allow for this null cavity to be entered in over there okay um so that's quite important to to keep in mind we've looked at the for loop how to go through the lettuce over there um so remember yeah you can change this to they say 200 in this case if you then type in the sentence hello there hope all is going well with you then there wouldn't be any issues it um it will still at the moment it's only pointing up the first 19 because we only restricted to 19 over there but we could make it 199 in the for loop hello there hope all is going well with you and you'll see all the other characters will become now outputs over there so again play around with the with these different commands have different um values or um letters or set of letters that you use for the string string command play around with the string length commands play around with the for loops the input of the of different um, um strings or sentences that you might want to to look at um as you play around with this you'll become more familiar with things and things will become clear to you remember we have to use the string.h library we've got to include it over there so um, um, otherwise a lot of these commands will not um, operate